Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Francesco and what I do in these videos is break down productivity tips, tools and techniques to help you move forward with your productivity. Oh, that's always a tongue twist to that one, uh, but I always get over it for some reason uh, every time. So what I want to do in this video is I want to help you guys understand um, how you could use your Dropbox paper in your everyday kind of system um, and also what it compares to Evernote, because obviously Dropbox been out for Dropbox has been out for a longer time, um, but Dropbox Paper has only been out for round about two months now. Um, I may be wrong in that one. I believe it was two months ago, uh, and it did kind of get a lot of attention at the start, but it hasn't really uh, hit the town running just yet. Uh, and that might be based that they have been beta for a while. I'm not too sure whether they're still beta. Uh, I believe they are. Um, so that means just access to the public isn't 100%. You have to kind of invite requests, those sorts of things, get past those kind of barriers to get into the service. Uh, and that's usually an indication from the service that they you know, really do actually um, keep it undercover until it goes fully live. They want to see whether it's viable. But anyway, guys, I wanted to kick off this session. So for the last week, what I've been doing with a few productivity uh, fans, geeks uh, in the area, um, I don't know whether geeks acceptable guys, but I appreciate it. So this is a Dropbox paper note, uh, I'm going to call it a Dropbox paper note, um, that me, myself, Paul Miners, and uh, Helen Cruiser, Cruiser, and Enrico have been working on. And before you kind of start, uh, before we kind of start um, Evernote, um, before we kind of start, um, Enrico does have a feature at the end of this. I did want to give a kind of another aspect um, to the kind of using this tool. So let's get started. So obviously in another session, I went over how you can use this in um, practice, like all the kind of features, but this um, is a way of using it when you're kind of uh, in a collaboration setting. So as you can see, uh, they have really animated emoji over here. This is Helen. She's put something here. So I, Helen, I think, added this over here. And essentially, she's been able to put that kind of uh, really cool uh, emoji there. Uh, and also, you can comment on the side, which looks really great, actually. I'm, I'm quite you know, attracted to being able to use this sort of things. You can use emoji in line as well. Um, and it's a kind of collaborating tool. It, I didn't really pick up any problems with this. It was kind of like Google Docs using it. So everyone else would sign in and then I would kind of jump back in a bit later um, and see that obviously things had changed, but it kind of email updated me when things had, which is really, really cool. Uh, it embeds YouTube video as well. Uh, it embeds really nice photos. This is a, a photo from Enrico. So um, the brilliant thing about Dropbox Paper is you can connect it directly to your Google Calendar. When I was in a meeting the other week, uh, I thought, you know, I'd take some notes with uh, Dropbox Paper and I connected to my Google Calendar. It detected the exact meeting I was in and instantly named the meeting notes after that one. And that was quite exciting because obviously, like Evernote does, that really did appeal to me because it you know, simply, it's simply a, a small thing that can kind of make a huge difference when getting started. You know, it's actually that ball rolling that you need when you're kind of making notes. So one thing I did start doing, and I'm going to create a new note for this, is I started being able to do this in my day. So I literally uh, tried this out for a few days, uh, tasks for the day. And what I do is I just press enter, and I just start adding, um, you know, checklists. And what was great about the checklist is Every time I hit enter, so if I went enter down there, help two, help three, uh, help four, as you can see, it's making this like visual list. And then what I could do is if I had a certain uh, note uh, that I wanted and break off or a set of notes, uh, I could just go uh, meeting notes. And this was quite handy because I found this as almost like a continuous timeline of my day. Um, and I really liked how this worked. So in kind of um, context, I could be able to map out all of the activities that had happened in my day just for using this. All of the checklists, all of the meeting notes, all of the images, everything I was collecting, videos, links, whatever it was, uh, to-dos, in and out, I could be able to detect it, uh, follow up from this. So it was quite useful when I was doing it with that. Um, I also saw a great use for when you're kind of um, setting up proposals with teams. 
So as you saw in this one here, um, it actually became really, really handy when being able to share kind of, I mean, this in itself, I mean, although it's obviously not anything like that, um, this could, you know, transfer into a really gorgeous looking proposal for someone. If someone came up in a meeting and sent this over, which is really great. So um, it looks really attractive. Imagine being able to send this over to someone and say, you know, edit this or, or actually be able to just view this. It actually just really gives it some context. And I think for teams as well, um, the, the kind of commenting tool is really ha like handy. It's like one of those ones that you actually want to connect with and actually be able to comment on things. So obviously, in the long run, this is really a Google Docs competitor. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to check over how it's very similar to Dropbox, um, Evernote. So let's just go out to the homepage. So very similar features to what Evernote has. Dropbox Paper allows you to create the notes and have a stream of recent, created by me, shared by me, and obviously deleted. You can also favorite all of them uh, and have folders and following. In Evernote, you have these notes in a stream. You can see the ones you've created. You can access the ones who are shared. You can't do that in real time, though, uh, like Dropbox Paper. Uh, I don't believe you can do it in real time fully to an extent that is impressive in use. Um, you have access to folders, which are called notebooks in Evernote. Um, you also have the ability um, to favorite stuff and don't know and don't necessarily use Evernote. Um, you can use the shortcuts feature inside Evernote and it essentially takes the notes or you know, for this case, it could be notes or documents in Dropbox paper and essentially just pin them for later so that you can have easy access to them. You know, they might be really important, but they might be really accessible at the same time. The folders, um, sorry, the following uh, was quite an interesting one. So you can follow a certain uh, activities. Um, and I'm not sure Evernote has this kind of uh, real great kind of notification feature. So Evernote has the ability to see notes, but the updated ones go to the top. So you can see the most updated note in your stream. Maybe that's you sharing up someone and seeing that it's been updated. But you actually don't have the ability to follow a certain stream of for updates. And what's great about this is, as you can see at the bottom, you can see exactly what's edited directly into that uh, content, which is really, really awesome. Uh, really, really awesome. Really, really awesome. Um, one thing that it does have over Evernote is I'm using it on a, a web, I mean, Chromebook. So as you can see, I'm using a Chromebook up here. I'll talk about this kind of banner if you want me to in another episode. But um, so, so I'm using it in a Chromebook. And the kind of benefit to this, uh, the negative of this, sorry, is that Chromebooks are fairly slow when it comes to using basic services. And that's, you know, that's not its fault, but it's very fast, which is great uh, in other areas of the kind of spectrum. But Dropbox Paper seems to be much snappier than Evernote when being, it feels very clunky, Evernote. Although they kind of, you know, dumbed down, not dumbed down, they kind of cleaned up and innovatively made a new experience. I don't think it's as good as the experience I've got on this service so far. I'm finding it much easier to be able to type comments and activities into um, Dropbox Paper. And I'm actually really attracted to using it much more. Uh, as well, it's got uh, integration with Dropbox, of course, um, which Evernote doesn't have. And one feature that I hate when I'm using Evernote is whenever I'm like, oh, yeah, th this should be. I mean, I'm using the, uh, the, the Internet version, so it's a little more different, but it's the same sort of thing on the other versions. When I want to add something, I have to choose a file, attach it, and then the image comes down here. I have to copy and paste it and drag it up here. Uh, with Dropbox Paper, you can kind of like uh, be able to, so if I just put, oh, it's reconnecting. Sorry, this is my internet being really bad. So WW Twitter there, I don't think it will come up. But essentially, I could be able to put images in there in line, and it would look really great. It would just be really fast uh, and really simple. So I'm just going to add an image quickly just to demonstrate this. What I've just done here is I've just added an image. Um, I think it's just uploading it. Uh, there it is. So this is uh, the new banner for the website. So this is kind of a little sneak peek. Um, so what I've done here is I've simply just uploaded this through the web. And so as you can see, it's very similar to using Squarespace. I mean, for those who haven't heard of Squarespace, it's a uh, mobile, actually not a mobile, it's a web creator online, very similar to kind of Wix and, and uh, Moonfruit as well. 
but essentially it brings uh, images into kind of real clarity. As you can see here, the kind of design and display is very similar to Squarespace. Um, and also kind of reminds me of Medium too. So it's a very attractive service when using them um, in kind of tandem. You can kind of get a continuous experience. I don't think Dropbox intended this, but it actually does look quite attractive. So Evernote in the kind of picture, big picture, uh, paper does look like a more attractive option. But the one thing that kind of drives people over to Evernote is it's Evernote, you can create things like reminders, you can create tags, you can create lots of other context to a task that allows you to complete it. And also it's a much more mobile friendly experience. Obviously at the moment, Dropbox Paper haven't got their mobile experience up and running, but it's something that is a real winner for Evernote at the moment. Um, I would actually like to see what this looks like in mobile format. If they did this offline, if they kept the service running more than a year, two years, I'd say, I'd be extremely happy to use this above Evernote. Um, although I really don't think, despite the user base um, and how you know smooth and easy it is to use it, Dropbox will actually continue this because th they're in a kind of space where they're testing out a lot of stuff. Paper makes sense in their ecosystem. Paper just actually makes sense. It sounds like a viable option. But for the moment, I'm not too sure whether it's something that they'll get a huge amount of traction off. They've done some amazing marketing around it. But for me at the moment, Evernote just seems to be the daily user, uh, daily active user. Um, and, and actually, I've just started using uh, Enrico, who's going to speak in a minute about this, uh, his opinions on this. Uh, and he might have very similar opinions to me. Um, and I'll be able to watch the video straight after this too. And I, I kind of want a raw experience with this so that I'm not kind of getting his opinion in on it too. Um, so it doesn't judge mine. But um he's just invited me over to a thing called matcha and matcha is an app that allows you to well essentially uh, take all of your evernote dropbox experiences and blend them into one app and also just kind of uh, play around them a lot more i actually really like this experience it really just feels intuitive and easy to use and simple and i'm kind of hoping they do it for web so anyway matcha is something that i'm checking out at the moment it's kind of hot on my list dropbox paper I'm not using it every day. I'm jumping in when I can and seeing the use cases uh, as much as I can so that I can kind of feed back to you guys. So anyway, guys, I appreciate um, you kind of uh, watching this video and I also appreciate any of your comments in the section below. Uh, remember, the comments act as the show notes. So it's really important for anyone to comment there who has an opinion or who has the ability to add more to the conversation. I'm going to jump over to Enrico, who's going to actually give, give you some more um, of his opinions and also some of the stuff he's doing in this space, which is great. So thank you very much, guys. Make sure you have a great week. Keep productive and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you. And I'll pass over to Enrique. Hello, productive people. Hello, Francesco. Thank you for having me uh, to add my two cents uh, on the topic of Dropbox paper and Evernote. And I would like to uh, get into the topic of uh, collaborating, which Dropbox Paper is obviously made for. And productivity is very often uh, about collaborating with other people. And uh, yeah, let's have a look on uh, how Evernote and uh, Dropbox Paper compare uh, on this topic. When it comes to collaboration, Dropbox Paper and Evernote both have their pluses and minuses. Um, starting with Dropbox Paper, of course, I can collaborate uh, with many people at the same time on the same document, given that all of those people use their computers and are online. Um, the remote uh, workers or mobile workers, they're having a bigger problem um, because uh, what you have inside Dropbox paper on the computer in the web interface is this little plus icon here where you can quickly add um, your pictures, files, tables, lists, uh, dividers and so on. This is uh, not the case um, for the <coughs> web interface uh, on, your, on your iPhone um, where you simply um, are bound to writing um, you can add pictures and videos by pasting the URL, of course, 
Um, but this is a this is a huge minus part that I don't have this little plus icon because uh, most of the time I would uh, rather pick pictures I have in my photo roll on my um, on my device on my i device uh, than searching for some uh, URLs that will parse a picture inside um, the Dropbox uh, paper um, document. So. When it comes to, to collaborating, um, at the same time, with many people, uh, Dropbox paper definitely wins for me here. Um, you know, taken in, into consideration uh, the minus that it is not suitable for mobile workers. Um, in Evernote, uh, collaboration centers around the work chat, of course. So here we can share notes, notebooks, and information. And um, yeah, working on the node is a is a yeah uh, is a solitary gig always. So if I send a node out to Francesco, uh, he then can open it in his Evernote client. He can work on the node. Uh, when he's done, he just you know notifies me uh, quickly via work chat. Enrico, I am done. You can take over, and then I can start working on the node again. Um, once we start working on the same node at the same time from do two different locations, uh, it will ultimately result in a uh, syncing error, um, and uh, that is, uh, yeah, uh, not uh, not the thing I would want in um, a software that tells me that I can freely collaborate uh, with my coworkers. Um, so yeah, Evernote definitely loses here when it comes to collaboration. Uh, uh, big groups, for example, um, I can have many people uh, on a notebook. Uh, this one is the privately shared Bending Evernote notebook. Uh, currently we have 171 people in here, um, but they have no rights whatsoever to change the notes in here so can, they can freely watch which is nice and they can just notify me via work chat uh, what they think about a note by um, either duplicating it into their system sending a copy to me with uh, you know with edits they have uh, they have made um, but uh, yeah as said working together at the same time on the same node is just not possible in Evernote so collaboration um, is possible, but it's not what I would want uh, out of a service uh, that tells me that I can uh, collaborate with people. It's uh, just, you know, uh, it's a big limitation. So um, I call it a draw between Dropbox Paper and Evernote, um, mainly because uh, most of the time I am using my iDevices uh, to get my stuff done. And um, I just cannot use uh, Dropbox paper on my iPhone without having the option to freely add uh, files or anything like tables or pictures uh, on my phone. So I'm handing over to you, uh, Francesco. Thanks for giving me a couple of minutes to add my opinion on Dropbox paper and um, Evernote. Um, I'm always enjoying your uh, vlogs and postings. So keep up the good work uh, in 2016. Best of luck. Uh, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and uh, yeah, have a blast over the next few weeks. Enjoy yourselves. Goodbye. So that's it from my side. Um, thank you very much, Francesco, for giving me a couple of minutes uh, on your video. Um, to add my opinion on Dropbox paper and Evernote. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, I just want to let you know that I really enjoyed your work um, and everything that you have done uh, over the course of this year, 2015. I wish you and all you guys out there a very Merry Christmas. Uh, have a blast, enjoy yourselves, and best of luck for the next year to come, 2016. Stay productive, stay healthy. Goodbye.